So we took advantage of a kind of crappy day weather-wise. You wouldn't know because the sun is now shining on us, but we put in a full day, a full hard day's worth of work out here, and it paid off. Let me walk down into the pond, which has been totally excavated. Now we've started to get into the stream excavation, but we are 95% of the way done with the pond. The brick wall in here turned out absolutely fantastic. I really, really love how this turned out. Remember guys and girls, there's gonna be a flagstone patio that cantilevers out over top of this brick wall and you'll be able to hang, dangle your feet sitting on the edge. You got these awesome step stones that also will lead you across the water feature. Okay, just a quick progress update. Jack's working on his dance moves while Joe and Luis are over here scraping out some of the soil so that we can get this stone, probably a good ton and a half ton slab, and it is going to act as our frame rock and partially our spill stone. The idea with this, right where Joe's hand is, we're talking about making that kind of our spillway. We want water kind of cutting right through there, which is exactly what was probably happening in nature. You'd see this is sandstone. This is easily erodible. So it's going to wear with flowing water. So it's gonna create a really, really cool effect. I just love the different striations in here. Create a nice little standing area. Okay, keep bringing it out. Water right over in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna then check with our level over here. We wanna make sure that at least six inches below current grade. I don't know. I just don't wanna hit this corner. I gotta go that way. You can go that way. Take it over that way a little bit. So it's the start of day four and we got a decent amount of progress here. We've got the whole basin pretty much rocked in. We just have to kind of do our gravel, cobble, landslide areas. We're gonna finish up like this area down here around the pump vault once we run our plumbing. We're gonna finish off that area with cobble and gravel and kind of make this alluvial fan kind of washout area over there. And then we'll do this very similar look over by Jack and make an aquatic plant pocket in there. So Jack's over there, he's gonna cut out a few pieces of rebar that were left over. We'll make sure to get those cut well below grade so that we don't have to worry about those being any kind of protrusion or anything that's gonna stick the liner and also make it able to be planted and get that liner up real close to the backside of this rock. So our goals for the day, a couple things. One is we have to seam this liner to our pond liner, which is gonna go straight back that way to where the machine is. And we'll also dig probably about a third or so of the pond, if not more, to go ahead and start rocking that. We're gonna have to have the machine sit on this side. So we wanna make sure that we still have access in case we need to get over here so we're going to make sure that we get everything along this backside done before we start digging our way back that way to prevent us from being able to reach any of this stuff so we just want to make sure that we're good so we'll get those two liners seamed together we were going to try and overlap but we also want this to have pooling water or have the ability to uh, uh, take on extra water up to the backsides of these rocks we have a seam to do here. The reason we're doing a seam, when we were looking at it yesterday, Chris brought up a, a point about the water depth inside of this pool and then the difference in elevation from the bottom of the stream bed to the top of the water level here. That delta between those two elevations was starting to get very small. So if we start getting any backup or if we get rains or anything like that, that water is going to probably, if we just had an overlap, remember I'm talking about an overlap now. So an overlap, I like to have six inches at least. So that means there's a change in elevation between the two liners. So we would have the bottom liner coming up like this and the top one is gonna come over like that and then the water flows in this direction. So it's like a flashing. So very similar to shingles on a roof, different types of flashings that are done in construction all over the world. The problem is when that gap, when the distance instead of six inches starts getting down two or three inches, it increases the likelihood of water migrating in between the two membrane. And that's because water is very unique. It has a high surface tension, so it actually can 
wick itself up into certain areas so it could actually migrate along that rubber membrane and as soon as it hits soil over on the back side it'll start drawing more and more water so it's actually pretty interesting and that problem that we don't want to have happen so what we decided to do was to do a seam so what we're going to do right now we just finished washing everything down so we're cleaning that surface we're also going to try to remove as much of the folds as possible we also changed the elevation a little bit so right over here instead of having a 90 degree corner we made like a we dug out a little bit of a channel so right there just a, a little bit of a ramp so that will allow us to easily go down with our seaming tape so there's several processes to it first one clean it dry it and i just put dirt on it clean it dry it and then we're going to come in with an epdm primer which is going to prepare the surface for the actual tape which is basically uncured rubber everybody we are back good morning it is the start of i believe day five day four whatever day it is here i don't really know it doesn't really matter to you guys because you're in youtube world but we are still in the middle of our large project our hundred thousand dollar project that we're working on out here in naperville you can see we've got a portion of the pond excavated behind me now we have fabric liner and fabric in we also have the trough cut out for our brick wall that's going to go in here we've got some three quarter clean angular rock that we're going to drop down in there for our base we're going to establish that elevation you can see Dan over there with the transit stick along with Ed trying to figure out the overall height of our wall so we can figure out what elevation our base needs to be set at so that we can have all the other courses of brick set accordingly so that our wall is not too high or too low based on water level. So it's a really kind of challenging thing to figure that out just because you want to kind of reverse engineer or reverse calculate based on the height of the wall where water level's at, that kind of stuff. So that takes some time. So we're going to go ahead and do our due diligence. We've got our truck just pulled up out there it's actually my brother-in-law burning earthworks is coming out to save the day and get rid of this large pile of soil back behind us that is gridlocking us from continuing to move forward with the excavation so wall is going to get done basin is going to get done dirt's going to get out of here all while trying to stay between raindrops so big day out here today in naperville but we are going to do this there he is <laughs> Best gosh start excavation company in Northern Illinois right there. <laughs> Brought the blue aquascape shirt. <laughs> So we're making progress here. We've got Ed working on putting in one of these large boulders that's really gonna set the shape of this corner of the pond. We've got the guys behind me working on beautifully putting together this unilock brick wall inside the pond where that patio is gonna come cantilever out over the top. Looks like they've got three more courses to go and then that patio will rest right on top. So that's looking fantastic. You can see there's been a lot of rock work already happening and we are cruising right along today and our dirt is getting out. But as you can see, that blue tire indicating that it is raining so we're hoping the weather will cooperate today dan's in the machine coming out and we are cruising right along still battling the weather in between raindrops okay so we've got this big rock that was going to work in off this edge after bringing it in ed determined that there we go there we go that this rock actually needs to be flipped over, making the top the bottom and the bottom now the top. And that's one of the beautiful things about this process is just the artistry of it and really kind of working our way through a rock that says, I need to flip the other way. I love the fact that we take the extra time and energy to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and restrap this thing and then set it back in there. So 
we took advantage of a kind of crappy day weather-wise. You wouldn't know because the sun is now shining on us, but we put in a full day, a full hard day's worth of work out here, and it paid off. Let me walk down into the pond, which has been totally excavated. Now we've started to get into the stream excavation, but we are 95% of the way done with the pond. The brick wall in here turned out absolutely fantastic. I really, really love how this turned out. Remember guys and girls, there's gonna be a flagstone patio that cantilevers out over top of this brick wall, and you'll be able to hang, dangle your feet sitting on the edge. You got these awesome step stones that also will lead you across the water feature. You've got a straight down section over here. Here's a two inch line for some of our circulation jets. So we're gonna have a jet there, a jet right there, as well as one coming out from underneath that rock there. So that circulation is super, super important, but we are into the stream now, that kind of deep stream area. So we're really excited about the progress we made today, but looking forward to tomorrow. And hopefully this nice weather stays with us a little bit longer and we can go ahead and continue to crush it. So really, really excited. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera away for the day. We'll be back tomorrow, but if we're not, and you liked what you've seen so far in this video, leave us a comment in the comment section below. And as always, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let us know how you feel. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so and click the little notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of the incredible content that we're coming out with three times a week. Guys, till next time, see ya.